Hello everyone and welcome to this quick tutorial video where I will talk about one of the starter applications called Change Request. As the name implies, it is used by end users to register some sort of request to change one of their existing IT systems. The main process of the Change Request application is also called Change Request and it has one workflow and you can see it right here in the middle. The idea is, of course, that in the start step, the end user registers the request where they will specify what they want to change. And among other things, there is a drop down from which they will select the system that they want to change. Because obviously, as you can imagine, various system have various vendors that will service it. So in order for this field to have available values, we'll need to fill them out in one of our dictionaries. If you would like to know more about dictionary processes, then pre please watch the introduction video where I talk about dictionary processes. Here, we will just register the, the systems and who is servicing them currently. So I'll kind of show you what this looks like. So it has these four fields where we enter the system name, the vendor, the person responsible, and the email. I've already filled it out so I can see it on one of the reports that comes with this application over here in dictionaries. So if I filled out these three values, so I have Web1 BPS, some generic CRM, and some generic ERP. Anyway, once the users register the request, it will go over to the IT verification step where also the cost estimation will take place. On this step, we have a nifty little item list for the cost doing the cost breakdown. So of course, I'll show that to you. And then once, the, once this is done, the IT verification is done, it goes over to the cost approval by business. And on this step, the business fellows will have the ability to generate um, a CR document from a template. So here is how it's handled. We have these actions on this step. This is, this is a menu button action, and it has it is with this one button called generate, generate CR document. And inside this button, we have these three actions defined. They are carried out one after the other from top to bottom. So first of all, it obtains a copy of the change request document template. Then based on that template, it generates another document and then it gets rid of the template. So it deletes it from the workflow instance. So normally a good way to host such document templates would be on SharePoint, but since we don't have the SharePoint installation, we will handle this using Webcon BPS only. And for this purpose, we have another dictionary process, this time called document templates. If I take a look at the workflow, it is a slightly modified version of our standard dictionary workflow, which I talked about in the intro video. As you can see, the, the, the scheme is exactly the same, except that there are these actions defined. Essentially, on every single path, we have um, an attachment validation action, which will verify whether there is an attachment added to the workflow instance, because the attachment is the core of this workflow instance. So the idea here is that at any one time, there will be one active change request document template. And so you can have one or a few people responsible just for this document templates process. And their job is to make sure that in this active step, there is always one change request document template. And then they can, of course, modify it, update it. They can deactivate it if they don't want it. They can create a new one. But essentially, the idea, the, the purpose is that there is one active CR document template at any one time. So anyway, back to the main workflow. Once the appropriate documents are generated and the costs are approved, the workflow instance will go over into the work in progress step. Of course, in this step, it will be assigned to some sort of team or person responsible for implementing the changes. And this is the last step where the change request can be discarded into the cancelled step. Of course, if it goes to the UAT step for the, for the tests and it comes back to the work in progress step, then it can also be cancelled as well. But generally, this is the last step that connects to the cancelled step. So anyway, once they finish, they will send it to the UAT step and it goes back and forth until the testing guys decide that everything works fine. And then it goes to production implementation. And finally, it goes to some sort of repository for completed change requests. So one final thing that we can show in, in the back end here is a global action for converting the CR document to PDF. It is a very simple convert word to PDF action. Its trigger is called attachment me attachments menu, which means that it is available from the menu of the attachment. So at any point of the workflow, because this is a global action, you can click on the little three dot menu and convert a word document to a PDF one. All right, that's it for the back end of this workflow. Now let's go and see what it looks like to the end user. 
All right, so here is our starting page for our change request application on portal. And we have some sort of dashboard for this application as well. So before I start, I'm going to verify that I have the values in the dictionary filled out. So this is what I showed you previously. We have these three values in our dictionary for selecting the system. And I also have a document template registered only one so that it will work correctly. All right, so let's go back to the starting page and let's launch a new change request workflow. So here's the entry form. First of all, I will select the system. These are our three values with or with all the with, with all the additional information. And if I select one of them, this information will be filled out into these fields automatically. And then I can fill out these three fields at the bottom here, title, deadline and description. All right, so I filled out this form and let's send it to the next step to the IT verification step. Let's follow it. All right, so we can pretend that we are now a different person. And so here we will fill, fill out this cost breakdown. So for example, we can add a new row and enter the name of the first phase. Let's say two man days, the daily rate of 500. And these values will automatically update and copied into the total costs. And of course we can add another row or anything you want really. And of course, this field, this total costs field and the bottom, the subtotal will, the subtotals will update uh, automatically. And once we've done that, you can approve it and send it to the next step to the business approval. And I'll follow that as well. And so here I have this button, this action button, which has the three actions combined. So it will first download the the document template, then it will generate a word file based on it. And then it will delete the template from this workflow instance. So let's cl click on that. This may take a moment. All right, so we have this new document added. And in the menu, I will find the global action convert document to PDF. So let's click on that. And I believe that this action configuration leaves the Word document as well. It is possible to configure the action so that the original Word document is deleted. But in this case, it just creates a PDF and it leaves the original Word document intact. And then we can send it, uh, we can approve it and send it to the work in progress step. And from there, it will go to the rest of the workflow. And here, nothing really that interesting happens. So I think I'll just leave it at that. That's it for this video. Even if you don't plan on using this application, I still recommend you get it just to take a look inside. So in this case, the change request app features a well thought out form. As you saw, it had the cost breakdown. It also had auto filling form fields, and it also features the commonly used attachment based actions. And as you saw, it is not necessary to host the document template on SharePoint. We just had a separate dictionary workflow for managing um, the, the document template. So if you'd like to implement something similar in one of your projects, be sure to get this application, dig into it, change things around, add stuff, remove stuff, and hopefully you will learn something new. Thanks for watching and goodbye.